Our next uh, section is going to discuss acids and bases, and then we're also going to look at the properties of the reactions that occur between acids and bases, which we call neutralization reactions. So before we begin, let's kind of define what an acid is and what a base is. An acid is defined as a substance that produces H plus ions in solution. There are various definitions of acids, but this is the one that we're going to focus on for this particular unit. And we're going to look at those to see how many hydrogen ions they produce in solution. We can categorize acids and bases in two ways. One of them is strong acids and strong bases. The other is weak acids and weak bases. And the properties in solution are going to be a little bit different. So let's list out the strong acids, and there are seven of them. The strong acids are hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, hydrobromic acid, which is HBr, hydroiodic acid, which is HI. We also have nitric acid, which is HNO3, perchloric acid, which is HClO4, chloric acid, which is HClO3, and sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. These are the seven strong acids, and in solution, strong acids will fully dissociate in water. So this makes the chemistry a little bit easier, and We'll focus on the strong acids at first, and then as we progress through the textbook, we'll talk about a lot of the properties of the weak acids, which form an equilibrium in solution, which makes the chemistry a little bit more difficult uh, to handle. So these seven strong acids, you must memorize them, and you need to know how to be able to rattle those off very, very quickly, and you'll be responsible for them for here on out. An example of a way a strong acid would fully dissociate in solution, if we have nitric acid, it's going to fully dissociate in the solution to give us H plus ions plus NO3 minus ions. So for every one mole of HNO3 that we have, we're going to get one mole of H plus and one mole of NO3 minus. We referred to these earlier as strong electrolytes. And nitric acid is an example of a strong electrolyte. So by knowing all of these seven strong acids, you're going to then know what the weak acids are. Because every other acid is weak. And most of the acids that we're going to analyze are going to start with an H. Notice each of the seven strong acids, its formula begins with an H. We can then define weak acids to partially dissociate in water. An example of a weak acid is acetic acid, which is H. C2, H3O2, and it's going to form an equilibrium with H plus ions in solution plus acetate ions in solution. This is a weak electrolyte. Notice I wrote an equilibrium arrow here rather than a full arrow. The reason for that is because for every one mole of acetic acid that dissolves, we don't get a full one mole of H plus and one mole of, of acetate. There's going to be an equilibrium, and we'll discuss that in one of the later chapters in, into detail of how we would investigate and analyze those types of reactions. 
In addition to the acids, we have bases. And a base is defined as a substance that produces OH minus ions in solution. And typically when we look at bases, we can identify a base because its formula ends in OH. The strong bases are all the group 1 hydroxides and the heavy group 2 hydroxides and those are CaOH2 SrOH2 and BaOH2. So our strong bases are calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide, as well as all the other group 1 hydroxides. Just like strong acids, strong bases fully dissociate in solution. So if I took solid sodium hydroxide and try to dissolve it into water, it's going to fully dissolve and give us Na plus ions in solution plus OH minus ions in solution. They will fully dissociate and this is a strong electrolyte. Weak bases will have partial dissociation. And an example of a weak base is ammonia. If we have ammonia, which is NH3 and we go to dissolve this in water, an equilibrium is going to form between NH4 plus in aqueous solution plus OH minus in aqueous solution. And just like weak acids, weak bases are weak electrolytes. So we can now take these definitions of acids and bases and see what happens when we go and react them together and they're going to form what we call neutralization reactions. So the next video is going to focus on the reactions that happen when we combine an acid with a base.